Stop going to the gym and doing whatever you want. Stop going to the gym and following your friend's program. Stop going to the gym and following that program that you bookmark on Instagram. Those workouts are not for you and I'm going to show you what it looks like to build a program specifically for you and not just for you but also for your goals. There's a lot of really really bad out there and together we are going to get through all of that and learn how to make a real training program because what I like to do is tell people how to stop exercising and to start training. So I'm going to show you guys the difference. Number one, we need to understand how much can I train for each and every body part each and every week because that is a very, very important variable that we need to know when building a training program. Now, for those of you right now, you're listening and you're like, this is way too nerdy. This video is not for me. Hang on. I'm going to make this very, very basic so everyone can understand it. And if you like to work out, you like to go to the gym, you have to watch this video because it will change your life forever. And once you see this, you will never be able to unsee it ever, 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 ever. And also this is a human lie detector for when you see programs that people are like, this is the best program in the world. You can just look at it, start adding up the numbers throughout the week and be like, this is a terrible program. I don't want to follow this program. Or you'll start to see these body weight programs and all these other little things that you see all over social media that once you see them, you're like, there's no way that builds any muscle because it just doesn't follow any of this. So where these numbers came from, this came from Dr. Mike Israelty. In my opinion, he's one of the best people in the game. He put a lot of these numbers together, pretty much all the numbers together, and he's has he's extrapolated a ton of data to make sure that these numbers are absolutely correct. You guys can look up tons of different research and find that these numbers do stand true even today. Whenever you guys are watching this video, this is legit info that's gonna work and probably stand the test of time. So what do all these numbers mean? Max recoverable volume. This means I can't really do more than this or I'm gonna be destroyed. We all know what that feels like in your training when you start going to the gym and you start feeling like absolutely destroyed. You start having bad sleep, you start feeling like sore all the time, you start feeling unmotivated in the gym. That's when you start reaching this red area, which is why I made it red. This MAV stands for max adaptable volume, and this is gonna be basically where you're gonna be making the majority of your gains, basically like right in between here and here, all right? MEV is the minimal effective volume, which is basically, you gotta start hitting these numbers to actually start making some progress. And then MV, this is a very interesting area. I love this area, because it's gonna prove so many things to so many of you out there that you stress about all of the time. So when we go on vacation and our girlfriend is like, yo, you don't need to work out today, like let's just be on vacation. You're like, no, I'm losing my gains, I have to work out. The reality is, we only need four sets for the whole week to maintain our hamstring game. <laughs> Isn't that insane? Like it's so much lower than you think. So like maybe you don't care about your hamstrings. You're like, yo, my chest though. What about my, what about my titties? Like what about, what about my lats? Eight sets a week. That's it. As long as you get eight sets a week in, you're going to maintain your gains. This is super good information for everybody to know. I want everybody watching this video right now to be like, damn, as long as I do this, I'm good, all right? Now you can't do this forever. Like eventually, you know, you're gonna start to lose some gains, but this is all you need to maintain. And some of this zero, front delts, glutes. I love this one because glutes at a zero is maintenance. Minimal effective volume is also zero. You know what this means? Genetics. You start seeing a big booty hoe over in Brazil, start walking around, big ass booty, starts talking about her 12 week program. Nah, your mama gave that to you. That's cool, but don't start trying to slang programs and think that you're all really good at training because you just, you're born with it. You know what I mean? You gotta, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a different, it's a different video altogether. But now you guys know some other really cool shit, right? Like that chick was born with it. Let's start breaking this down a little bit more. So that's your maintenance. We gotta start hitting these numbers to start making some gains. And then these right here is gonna be where the majority of us start to actually start making some nice gains in our training program. So let's start to think about the very first thing that we're looking for right now in a training program. You download somebody's app, you buy someone's training program in general. You're gonna start to look for, you start adding up how many sets do we have for glutes? How many sets do we have for chest? Biceps, triceps, back, abs, all that stuff. You're looking for like right around like 12 to 20 ish sets, depending on the muscle group per week. That's going to be where most people want to land. And some of you guys are going to be like, well, how do I know if I'm 12 or how do I know if I'm 20? Well, first off, you guys start looking at the chart. The numbers are different for different body parts, but also the lower end is going to be the people who have less training experience. The longer you've been in the gym, 
the higher the numbers are going to be for you. Once we get into this realm here, week over week, we're going to start drifting into the red zone, which is like the maximal amount of training volume that we can take until we start getting really, really sore, start getting really, really dragged out in our training. So what we like to do is start here, slowly go here, slowly go here, and maybe this takes you around like eight weeks to go from here all the way to here. And then once you get there is when you do a deload week. So a deload week is typically about a 30% reduction in your training volume. So you can do a 30% reduction either by training less days that week, you can take less sets in your workout. So you go from three sets to two sets, you go 30% less weight and take some sets out. You can just take the whole week off if you want. I mean, that's obviously not ideal. There's a lot of different ways that you can get 30% less training volume in, in your training program, however you decide to do it, honestly. So again, here's our numbers. I don't want to go through each and every one because it's going to take a really long time, but you guys can just look at it. You can screenshot it if you want, whatever you want to do there. You guys, you guys can also just go on Google and type in Dr. Mike Israelty's volume chart and you guys can actually get like a little PDF version of this. But here's another really cool thing. Now that I know these numbers, let's just say that I want to go to the gym and I want to maximize as much as possible in my chest, in my delts, in my glutes, right? Like I'm like, I'm cool with my biceps. I like my legs. Like I like my calves. I like, I like the way everything looks. I just want bigger delts. I just want a little bit bigger glutes, right? Let's just go, let's just for the hell of it, we'll go chest, delts, and glutes, right? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna make sure that my training program has at least these numbers for all the other body parts that I don't really care to grow even more. So I know some of you are saying, well, why wouldn't I just try to grow all of them? Well, it's like, first and foremost, if you like where you're at, then you don't need to keep growing those muscles because if you're happy with where they're at, you can do the minimal effective training stimulus and you can save yourself a lot of time in the gym. Because if your hamstrings, for instance, can take a lot of training volume to actually make a change, but you're not hitting that, let's say you're somewhere in between like the green and the blue, but your hamstrings really need a nice 20 sets to make a change, it doesn't really matter if you're doing six or 16 sets, you're not gonna make a change, which is wild, which means that you've been spending a lot of time in the gym just wasting time. Like we have to be in the gym pushing some of these limits or nothing's gonna change. By definition, changing is an adaptation. So to create an adaptation in our body, we need to do one of a few different things. We need to add more repetitions, which increases our training volume. We need to add another set, which increases our training volume. We need to increase the intensity. We can lower the rest break to increase the intensity as well. Or we can just add more weight to the bar. So if we lifted 100 pounds last week and we lift 105 pounds this week, that's a new adaptation in our body that will create a change. Our body's gonna be like, oh, I need to do something to overcome this new heavier weight. So what am I gonna do? I'm probably gonna get stronger and to get stronger, I'm probably gonna need to get bigger, right? So you're gonna put on more muscle. Now, as long as you're eating enough calories, you're probably gonna put more muscle on. However, beginners, even if they don't eat more calories and they're very undertrained and now they're following a real training program, they can make great changes even if they don't eat more calories. But let's save that for another video. We're starting to figure out how many sets we need for each muscle group per week. So now we can start creating something called a volume chart. So this is the volume landmarks, like we don't wanna go over these numbers. So with that being said, now I'm gonna make myself a training program. And this would, this would be like all of you guys right now. You guys can just make this together with me. Go ahead and get a pen, get a paper. Let's do the damn thing. So my goal is to maximize my delts here. So I'm probably gonna go up to this 26 sets. So I'm gonna make sure this is right at the end. I also wanted to increase my chest. So we're gonna go 22. And I said I wanted to increase my glutes. So we're gonna go 16 here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at the lower end of the blue. So I'm a little bit more intermediate athlete. So I'll probably go eight, 10, 12, 14, and slowly start to build up that training volume right here. And then same here, we can go over here. We can start at like around 14. Go to 16, go to 18, go to 20, hang out at 20 once you start getting there, then go to 22. All right, so the first thing you need to figure out is are you a beginner, are you an intermediate, are you an advanced athlete? So if you're a beginner, you're someone who has never really followed a real training program ever. You're someone who has gone to the gym, you might be working out really, really hard in the gym, but you've never followed anything structured. You've never followed anything like this. I know it's really hard to hear, but if you haven't followed anything very structured, you're just, a beginner. 
which is great news, honestly, because it means that once you start doing this, you're gonna get insane results. So don't like be ashamed of admitting the fact that you're a beginner. People who go to the gym for 10 years, still beginner when they don't do this stuff. I have a one-on-one -on -one coaching program right now. It's called Chalk VIP. And I had a guy who's literally been training for 20 years. He just started following a real training program. This guy lost 20 pounds and put on like 10 pounds of muscle. He looks insane. So it does make that much of a difference. If you're an intermediate athlete, that means that you've been following a real training program for a year, but you're not at the point where your body's able to take on a lot of training volume. And then you guys would be advanced if it's been three years or more. So you guys know your friends who follow their training program very, very diligently. They know exactly what they're doing in the gym. They've been doing it for a very long time. Those are the people who are not only going to be starting at the higher numbers, but they're also going to be surpassing all of these numbers as well. It's not uncommon to see people hit like up to 30 sets per muscle group per week. There's actually been accounts of people doing like 40 sets per muscle group per week. I'm gonna go ahead and call some serious supplementation there because it'd be really tough to get all that training volume in. Plus you'd be working out probably six or seven days a week to do that. Um, and to be able to recover from that would definitely need some supplementation as well. For 95% of the population, 90, maybe 98, 99, these are the numbers that are gonna be legit for everyone. If you have a job, you actually have to make money. You actually have to provide for your family. Like you have hobbies, anything like that. You're not just living in the gym all day long. This is you right here, all right? And that's also a good thing, which means you don't have to be in the gym all day to make results, right? I don't want people in the gym all day to get results. I want people to spend as least amount of time in the gym to get the best results possible. Now we're making our training program. This is me increasing training volume for my chest, for my glutes. We know what I'm gonna do now here for my rear delts. I'm gonna start at probably around 18 or 20 and then i'll slowly start to build to this 26 and then for all of these areas here i will be somewhere between the green to the first number because i don't really care to build this muscle significantly more i just want to like kind of get a minimal effective stimulus and also be able to maintain that muscle so now what that's going to do is going to build me the optimal program for me to make sure that i am growing the body parts that i really want to grow so when you guys start seeing programs out there in the world that are like, this is a trap and bicep uh, focused program. Like I've seen them out there. And like when I first started my fitness journey, I was like, what the hell does that mean? Like it's still, the program still has legs in there and it still has all these other things in there. But I didn't understand that it was because they're focusing on specific muscle groups, but they also understand the training metrics behind it so that I know that I'm actually putting all of my eggs in the right basket. This is a really cool thing to understand. Most of us can be making majority of our results right here in this blue to red range minimal effective, your maintenance. When you start making a chart like this, you start putting in your volume metrics so you know where you're going. You can either maintain a muscle, you can grow a muscle. The next thing is, should I do a push-pull split? Should I do a full body split? Should I do a bro split? Like, what is the best training split? Well, it really doesn't matter. Honestly, it really comes down to like what you like to do in your training program. A lot of studies recently have been saying like the more exposure you give to a muscle, the more it's probably gonna get stronger and grow. So some people do love full body training splits. I love full body training splits. A lot of people like push pull splits because they'll hit each one of those workouts multiple times per week. And then a bro split, you know, where you're breaking up those muscle groups, you're also hitting them at least twice a week. So when, when, we, when we say it like that, it's like, if you're gonna be doing chest here for 14 sets, that's 14 sets for the whole week. So if you have two sessions, let's say you're doing a bro split, in those two sessions, one of the sessions, you're gonna have seven sets in it, and the other set, you're gonna have seven sets total in it, or you're gonna have like eight and six, right? It's gonna be something like that. So now with that being said, it's like, all right, well, what does a seven set workout look like? Well, if it's seven sets for my chest, it's probably gonna be like four sets on incline, and then another three sets on like flies, right? Something like that. Or it could be, you know, flat dumbbell bench and some other chest movement. And there's your four sets and your three sets. And then if it's eight, then it's four sets for both. Now, after we know what kind of split it's gonna be, full body, push pull, bro split, whatever it's gonna be, now we can start to figure out how many days a week we wanna train. So if you only wanna train four days per week or you only wanna train three days per week, you're gonna be doing more training each and every session. You're just gonna have a longer training session. If you train more days per week, you're gonna have shorter training sessions. 
So that's one thing to definitely like take into account. Do I wanna train three days a week? Do I wanna train four days a week, five days a week? Is it really gonna matter if I train five days a week versus three days a week? Well, if you train five days a week, even with the same training volume, but it's a shorter training session, you're probably gonna have more energy and more intensity in the session, which is gonna give you better results, which is where the intensity factor comes into play. Because you could be doing all of this stuff correct, you absolutely can, but you might not bring the right intensity into the gym. So the definition of building muscle is gonna be 30 to 85% of your one rep max, five to 30 repetitions, and an RIR, which is reps in reserve of four or less, which means if I'm lifting a weight, RIR four, reps in reserve four, means I have four reps left in the tank. All right, so I'm lifting, let's say I'm doing squats, and I'm getting to the point where it's so hard, I get to the top that, if you put a gun to my head, I have four reps left. That's all I can do, all right? And then there's gonna be times in your training where you're gonna be doing an RIR of two or even one, which means that if you only did one more rep on an RIR one, that you only, if you didn't, let's say you're doing like eight reps and then you get to the top and you're like, if I do one more rep, I'm completely destroyed. Like there's just no way. So that would be like on that eighth rep, that would be your RIR one. Sometimes people use RPE, which is rate of perceived exertion. It's the same exact thing. It just sounds a little bit more fancy, a little bit more complicated. Sometimes I like RIR because it just sounds easier for people to digest. They're both the same thing. So there you go. There's your days per week. This is how you're gonna choose your sets. Your repetitions is gonna be five to 30. You're gonna be using your compound lifts are gonna be the lower numbers. So like squats, deadlifts, barbell presses, anything like that. And then all the accessory movements, which is gonna be like single muscle groups, abs, biceps, triceps, calves, front delts, side delts, all that stuff's gonna be higher repetitions. And then you're gonna be changing those pretty much like every mesocycle. So like every four weeks, you're gonna be changing the repetitions on those. So if you're doing 12s, for like four weeks, the next four weeks, you might wanna do 15s or maybe 20s. And then after that, go back down to like sets of 10 or something like that. Like every four weeks, you wanna change the rep scheme just to keep things fresh and fun and be able to change the stimulus up, change the weight up and change different, different variables in your training. There's your repetitions. There's your days per week. Now it's gonna come down to which exercises do I do? How do I know what exercises to do? You know what exercises to do based off of the way that you feel on the exercise. This is a very, very important part because everyone will say squats are the absolute best thing for legs. Hip thrusts are the absolute best thing for glutes. So-and-so is the best thing for biceps. Well, some people don't feel movements the same way that you feel movements. So you have to keep messing around in the gym until you feel movements where you're like, damn, I have a insane pump on this movement. This is by far one of my favorite movements. That's gonna be a movement that you put in, let's just say, if we're gonna be doing 14 sets, you're gonna absolutely make sure that you do incline bench press, right? Because you love incline bench press. Personally, I don't really like incline bench press for me with a barbell. I like it a lot with dumbbells though. So for me, the barbell, I feel it more in my front delts than I do feel it in my chest. So for me, like, I'll probably not gonna be doing barbell bench press. I'm gonna be doing dumbbell bench press. And then some people just don't feel flies. Like with dumbbells, they just don't feel it. They don't have the right range of motion. It doesn't feel right. Their muscle connection is off. So all of a sudden they use cables, complete game changer for them. So while one program might say dumbbell flies, you might need to be like, dude, I can't do dumbbell flies. They don't work for me. So I'm gonna do cable flies. It doesn't mean you just do the dumbbell flies anyway, even though you, they feel like shit. Do the thing that makes you feel super, super pumped and sore the next day. Now. I know I said the word sore, just because you're sore doesn't mean that you're necessarily making progress in your journey. As long as you can feel that pump and you feel that mind muscle connection. And when I say mind muscle connection, you actually feel the muscle working and you feel the pump and you feel everything that needs to be in that area when you're lifting. Like you don't wanna be doing chest flies and feeling it in your biceps and feeling it in your front shoulders and feeling it in other places besides your chest, right? You wanna make sure that you're doing the movement and you're feeling it in the muscle group. Sometimes people will just be doing squats and they're like, dude, my lower back is just exploding. It's like, dude, I don't need you thinking about your lower back while you're doing squats. If that's all you're thinking about, it's the only thing that's bothering you. Like, let's just not do squats. Let's do leg press. Let's do Bulgarian split squats with dumbbells. Like, let's, let's just do something else, all right? Like, guys, if you don't like a movement, fucking change it. If the movement hurts, change it. I don't need movements to hurt. Make sure the movement, you're feeling it in the muscle group, all right? That's really, 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 really important. A lot of times too, like I'll get messages from people and they're like, dude, I, I can't squat. What do I do? Like, I, I, I can't squat. I'm like, just, just think for two seconds, like, 
what resonates, like what it looks similar to a squat in the gym? Leg press, like, you know, freaking any other movement that has you like going down, a hack squat machine. A hack squat machine is completely different than a barbell squat. Your foot position on a hack squat is completely different than a barbell squat. Like there's positions that you can do on a hack squat that you just can't get in with a barbell, otherwise you would fall over. So you can take a lot of pressure off like your knees, for instance. You can put a lot more pressure on your glutes. You can definitely pinpoint specific muscle groups. The same thing with a leg press. You can put your legs in such a way where it's not really bothering your knees, maybe bothering your hips, even like the width of your feet and all these different things, all right? Tons of different things you guys can do. Anyway, that's everything you guys need to know right now in terms of how much should I train? What movements should I do? What reps should I do? What sets should I do? How do I make that actual program? What is the definition of what the f doing is right, which is 30 to 85%, five to 30 repetitions, RIR four. We don't wanna go over these red numbers because I'm not someone who lives in the gym all day, every day, and I need to be doing an insane amount of training volume. So for those of you right now, that's a good point. If you're someone who lives in the gym all day, every day, and you're not getting any results, which is a lot of people watching this video right now, that means that you're in this range and you don't belong there. You don't belong there. This is like 90% of CrossFit athletes just hanging out in this range here. You know why? Because you do all these random workouts that don't have any tracking in them. So you wind up doing so much stuff to get better at the sport of CrossFit and you wind up overtraining, you get injured, and you wind up having these times throughout your training where you're like, you look in the mirror and you're like, damn, I look really, really good. And then a month goes by and you're like, damn, I look really, really bad because your body needs a deload on the weeks that you look really, really bad and you overtrain for a really long time. And all of a sudden your squat numbers are going down and all of a sudden you're emailing Ryan Fisher and you're like, dude, I just wanna get strong. I just wanna get good at CrossFit and I don't know what's going on. I've been training so, so much and I'm just not getting any stronger. I see it all the time. And it's basically because you're just living in this red zone. And it's really easy to live in the red zone when you don't have any sort of tracking. And it's really easy to be all over the place, be here and here and here and here and here and, here and all over the place when you're doing random training. I like CrossFit, high intensity interval training, functional movements, all this stuff as a maintenance program. I like when people do it because they've already gotten to where they want to be. They want to have fun in their training now. They are allowed to have fun in their training now because they're maintaining. Because what does it take to maintain? Right? Now we just got to have fun. Like once you get to where you want to be, we can just off all day and do all sorts of shit. We can go work out with our friend. We can go on vacation and still look good. We can start training for like, you know, a marathon and like just start doing like our you know our normal training sessions and just kind of get by and maintain our muscle mass you're probably going to lose a little bit as you train for the marathon but you're not going to look terrible because of this here because of this so once we get to where we want to be there's so much more leeway in our training and that brings me to another point when you guys are on social media and you see these girls these guys are like they're doing body weight training and they're like guys do my body weight program like this is the best workout ever and like you guys can get super fit at home no mother you did all of this for years and years and years and years and now you are pitching something that is portraying something that you got from doing something else you didn't get it for doing the body weight you just you, you didn't all right and it's just it's bad it's, it's it's not good for social media it's not good for people's expectations of what is possible for them and if we talk about newbie gains yes the fat person off the street who has never done anything will get some results from that body weight program, but they will never look like the person who put out the body weight program because you are not creating an adaptation after a certain point. There's only so many air squats, so many push-ups you can do until you get to the point where you need to actually create a change in your body from doing more sets, more reps, heavier weight. So unless you plan on getting fat and gaining weight and putting that resistance against your body or wearing training training vests and all of that stuff which is going to go away eventually as well then you're going to have to start lifting weights like you have to lift weights if you want to put on muscle mass there's never been a bodybuilder ever on stage who's like just did body weight shit at home for the last 10 years now i'm here it just doesn't happen it's just not gonna it's not gonna happen you're not gonna see an olympic li lifting athlete all of a sudden on stage just like snatching all these crazy weights and be like broomstick hi at home <laughs> i'm laughing now because it's ridiculous like if you want to get strong, you want to put on more muscle, this is it. This is it. This is where it's going to happen. If you're a girl right now and you're watching this, you're like, I just want to get toned. Everybody wants to get toned, right? When guys say they want to get ripped, they're saying, I want to get toned. It's the same shit. It's the same shit. 
all right? If you want to get toned, you need to build muscle first and you need to take the fat off the muscle and you'll be toned. Build muscle, take the fat off, you'll be ripped. It's the same shit. doesn't matter, all right? If you want to get big, you want to put on muscle, you want to do all these things, you got to do this. If you're saying to me, Ryan, why aren't you super jacked and super ridiculous if you know all this shit? because it takes a lot of time. I mean, I look pretty good. I feel like I look pretty good. But if I want it to be even bigger, which I really don't, I actually like where I'm at, but if I did want to get really, really big, I would lock in all these numbers. You got to make sure you're eating enough every single day. You got to make sure you have low stress. You got to make sure you guys are drinking enough water. You guys got to make sure you're doing a lot of things right. And you got to make sure that your hormones and everything are at optimal and you're sleeping enough. Like there's so many variables that you need to do to get to peak, 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 peak. And then when you get old like me and you're almost 37, that shit's all gonna go down. <laughs> so the older you get, the more this needs to be locked in, even more. So when you're younger, you definitely have a, a little bit more leeway. So now some of you guys might say, this was a great video. I like it a lot. I'm probably gonna share it with some of my friends. I think that a lot of it I just forgot and there's a lot that went over my head and I maybe have to watch this shit all over again. Or, you know what, it was great to watch, but I'm probably not gonna implement any of it. Here's what you can do if you're not gonna implement any of it, all right? I'll give you the shortcut. If you're not gonna implement anything, make sure you guys go to the gym, make sure you're doing anywhere between 15 to 20 sets per muscle group per week, all right? Just make sure you're doing 15 to 20 sets per muscle group per week. And then, make sure you're lifting about two reps short of failure on all of your training sets. If you just do that alone, you're going to be getting probably 80 to 90% of the results that you would get if you did everything right all year long. Also, one other thing that you should be doing is probably every four to six weeks, you should be taking a 30% reduction in your training volume. So just, you start feeling a little bit burned out and you start feeling burned out for two or three days in a row. If you have one bad training session, it doesn't mean that it's time for a deload, but if you have two or even three in a row, definitely time to take a deload, or you can just schedule it in every four to six weeks. I don't necessarily think that you have to schedule it in. I do like when you kind of feel it a little bit more than when you schedule it in. They both work great though. Make sure you guys working out to about two reps left in the tank. Make sure you're going 15 to 20 sets per muscle group per week. You're gonna get a ton of results. I really hope this made sense. I know this is a lot for one video, but I do really want you guys to understand what a good training program looks like because there's so much just BS out there. And there's just, a, there's just, there's not a lot of education on what a good training program looks like. So I hope you guys love this video. Obviously like the video, share it with your friends. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. I'd love to start adding a lot more stuff like this to the channel. Probably gonna need a volume two, volume three of this video. Cause I know a lot of guys are gonna probably wanna see me break down things in a little bit more detail. And then if you guys haven't already, take a screenshot of this, take a screenshot of this. If you guys ever want to like not think about this at all, you just want all this to get done for you, that's what we do over at Chalk Performance Training. This is my whole life. So I make training programs for people to make sure they get the best results possible. Whether you're an athlete, whether you're a bodybuilder, whether you're just an average Joe, whether you're someone who just wants to get in shape, that's what I do. So make sure you guys check us out at gymryan.com, G-Y-M-R-Y-N.com. I have multiple training programs each and every day. When you guys get access to the app, you get access to eight different training programs, including the power building program, which is for people who want to get super, super strong and bodybuild at the same time. I have the full body aesthetics program, which is my own version of full body training. That's by far my favorite training program. It's by far the most popular one. I have strength and conditioning, which is my version of what CrossFit should have been. We have interval training in there. We have a lot of high intensity stuff. We have also have strength training in there. And that's gonna be giving you the most bang for your buck with all of the interval stuff mixed in. We also have a bunch of other training programs on there as well that I'm sure you guys will love. So again, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. If you guys have any questions, put them in the comments.